I'm really liking these new mini PCs, not just because of how compact they are, but also for how much processing power is in such a small package without using too much wattage. But not all mini PCs are created equal, and like all things, there are varying levels of quality. I've been testing out some of the devices from B-Link, and in the past I've reviewed their SER8 model, which I still have running in my lab running production workloads. This latest device, which was sent to me from B-Link, is the B-Link EQR6. Now, even though they did send me this device, and I have been testing it for a little while, all opinions around, and there is no editorial influence from B-Link in my review. The B-Link EQR6 I'm reviewing has an AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX with Radeon graphics, dual gigabit Ethernet jacks, although I'd like to see 2.5K here, but we got what we got, crucial brand 24 gig DDR5, 4800 megahertz, a crucial 1 terabyte NVMe, and room for one more. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Now I know this runs Windows completely fine, so all the testing I did was with Linux, so let's get started. Now the first place I want to start is here on the B-Link page that you'll find linked down below, and that is also going to cover the price, because everyone always asks that in the comments, so let's get out of the way right now. $429 as of October 28th of 2024. You are probably watching this in the future where this price may have changed, but that is at least what it costs right now. You can also check around on Amazon and probably find some better prices. Uh, there's deals out there all the time, and hey, check out Prime Day. Now let's talk about the rich interfaces as they label it. There's not too many interfaces on this to talk about, but we do have a USB 3.2 10 gig on the front. We have our three and a half millimeter audio jack, which I did not use at all simply because I was using Linux. I mean, I tested it to make sure it worked in Linux when I was running a desktop OS, more on that in a moment. Uh, we have a clear CMOS button. This is actually something I'm gonna say is pretty important because they give you a lot of BIOS options, which gives you many opportunities to make mistakes and uh, hit the clear button to reset to the default setting. So the BIOS is pretty unlocked. There's a lot of options in there and there's a way to get back to the beginning if you mess it all up. We have a USB-C 10 gigabit here. We have the power button, power indicator light. And then on the other side, we have two more USB 3.2s, two HDMIs, one USB 2.0 480, and then we have our two one and a half gig LAN, and then we have the built-in power supply. Let's talk about that built-in power supply real quick. Now the built-in power supply, I was a little skeptical of because, well, what if they go bad? And also, how hard is it to remove? And both of those questions were actually easily answered with two videos you'll find linked down below. Uh, another person on YouTube did an entire teardown of this device to show you exactly how to take it all apart. And I will admit, I was a little worried about doing it myself, but their teardown video is great. And then they did a power supply replacement to get more wattage into the system. And it's clever how they do the power supply on that. They're just using the pins to uh, conduct the power that are actually the bolts for the power supply. So it's pretty serviceable, which I think is very reasonable. The other thing that was reasonable was the power usage. At idle, it was about 11, 12 watts, depending on what I had running on there. And then all the way at peak under full load, it hit about 54 watts. And in the entire time, it did not get loud or get to the point of overheating. I've actually run this quite a bit under heavy workloads and never had a problem. Now, the first OS I loaded was actually Pop OS because I wanted to see how it worked. If you're not familiar, Pop OS is a Ubuntu derivative and the Wi-Fi worked, the networking worked. So all the things that you kind of got to check the box to make sure you can run Linux on there, no problems. Now then I moved over to virtualization. The next operating system I tested was Proxmox, loaded that perfectly fine, version 8.2, no issues loading it, then started building some VMs, just loading some Debian Linux, worked perfectly fine. After that, I wiped it and moved it over to XCPNG version 8.3 and built a few more VMs. This time I chose Windows because I wanted to update one of my Windows 11 labs here and no issues running Windows. It actually is quite fast being that it's virtualized. So these AMD processors definitely have plenty of power and this system seems completely compatible with Linux and both virtualization platforms. And like I said, no issues at all. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this did ship with Windows on it, but I'm not much of a Windows person and I'm not much of a gamer, but I will leave two more reviews of this device by people who do games and do more Windows desktop testing than I did. My focus is mostly, well, will it work with the virtualization workloads that I want? Will it work with Proxmox, XCP, and G, or just Linux in general? Because that's not something that these companies do a great job of listing and you don't want to buy it and find out there's like not support. Now, these are real tech cards in here, which I'm not usually the biggest fan of, but I didn't have any issues with them. They did not have any 
network drop issues. I have this little Unify two and a half gig switch I had connected to it. Yes, I know there's only one gigs here. It'd be great if these were two and a half gig, but you know, I didn't have issues setting up VLANs with the virtualization or any problems with getting that working. And I kind of like the way it sits on top and is about the same size. It makes it look kind of cool. And I think this is kind of a neat, compact home lab device. My overall feeling on B-Link is they make a solid device. I've tried pushing it to its max, holding it in stress mode, essentially with the CPU and it gets warm and some warm air comes out, but it never overheated. It didn't melt. It didn't shut down on me. I imagine there is a point of thermal throttling I could possibly run into. But most of the time, if you have a workload that heavy, this is probably not the exact device that you're looking for. But overall, uh, the durability seemed pretty good. Now, granted, I've only been testing it for about a month. So this is not a long-term durability test because I've only had it for a brief amount of time since B-Link sent it to me. Check out those videos down below. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Always love hearing from the audience or if there's a particular piece of software or non-Windows related, you make it think I should have tried on ISA, leave that in the comments too, or head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Head over to lawrencesystems.com and hit me up on the socials if you want to say hi at whatever you find there or sign up for my newsletter. Like and subscribe to see more content and thanks. Thanks to our sponsors for their continued support.